.NET 9 is here. That means it's time to upgrade your .NET MAUI applications from .NET 6, 7, 8, or whatever you happen to be on to .NET 9. Take advantage of all of the new performance features and capabilities and new controls as well. I'm gonna show you today how to easily upgrade it in just a few minutes, so tune in. Hey everyone, I'm James, and today I'm going to show you how to easily upgrade your .NET MAUI applications from .NET whatever all the way up to .NET 9 to take advantage of the latest and greatest and all the good stuff that was announced at .NET Conf and on the .NET blog and all that stuff. This is my first video on my new Mac Mini M4 setup, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, hopefully the audio, video, all this stuff is good. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm going to be recording everything over here inside of Visual Studio 2022, but of course you can do it in Visual Studio Code as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, first things first, I'm over here inside of Visual Studio 2022, and I have my .NET MAUI application. As you can see here, it's just targeting .NET 8. Let me open up the CS Proj. Boom, there it is. Uh, now, this is a kind of file new project, but I've modified a few things so we can take a look at some of the intricacies of maybe things that you might want to consider modifying and upgrading for .NET 9. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is just simply change all of the settings here from .NET 8 to .NET 9. Now, of course, you need to have .NET 9 installed on your machine with .NET MAUI workload. So obviously upgrade to the latest version of Visual Studio 2022, which will upgrade it for you, or install the .NET 9 SDK and the .NET MAUI workload. Let's go ahead and do that here. So I'm just going to go in nine. I'm going to go over here, nine, and then nine as well. And then I'm going to make sure that the Windows is also nine here too. You don't need to change anything else. All the identifiers are the same, so you're good to go. All right. Now inside your CS Proj, not too much else also has to change, to be honest with you. So all of these uh, are the same as far as use MAUI, single project, implicit usings, and nullable. Uh, you may or may not have a nullable on. It was added, I think, in .NET 8 to the template. Uh, so that could be an option if you want to do that to help with null protection. Something to then think about are these supported OS and target platform identifiers for version numbers over here. Uh, here we can see that this is what is set currently in the .NET 8 templates of iOS 11, uh, Mac, Android, Windows. This is kind of how far back things go. Now, in the new templates, uh, there are some changes here. So specifically on iOS, this changes it to 15. Same for Mac uh, Catalyst. I'm going to change it to 15.0. And then uh, here, all the other ones are going to remain the same as Android 21, Windows for uh, the, the 10, 17, 7, 6, 3 for support and target. Now, that being said, this isn't the, the minimum supported OS version for these. Uh, actually, it's like iOS 12 dot something, I think. So you definitely want to check documentation. And of course, you know, change those versions based on what your users are using and what you need in your application. Okay, the other thing to think about on this is going to be below in the NuGet packages. I'm going to scroll down to the bottom. And all of these assets are all the same, but here we're going to want to upgrade these version numbers. The first thing is changing the logging.debug to 9.0.0 or whatever the latest version is. And then we can actually delete this compatibility NuGet. Uh, you shouldn't need it anymore. It's not in the templates anymore, and, and I've removed it from all mine as well. Now, there's a few things to consider here. First is if you want to use the MAUI version identifier, this is what's coming in from the SDK that you have installed. If we go and open the NuGet gallery and type in Microsoft MAUI controls, you can see them here. And if you tap on it, you can see that there's 9.0.0 and 9.0.10 that's here. So you can pin it by putting in the specific version number, uh, or you can just roll with whatever the uh, latest is with your SDK. I prefer to pin and, or upgrade manually, but it's up to you there. And, and note though, that if you are on nine here and we look at dependencies this is built against net nine so to actually use the 9.0 you need to be targeting net nine so that's important to realize there so we're going to leave it as maui version i'm going to hit save and we're going to see the whole project dependencies are all going to reload here up in the uh, solution explorer here now i would say it's best practice at this point to probably do show all files and actually like kind of delete your bin and your obj file from here that might just be sort of a best practice i would say it's going to get recreated so it kind of disappear and come back 
uh, just in case. In, in fact, you you definitely want to probably even clean and and rebuild, maybe even you know close the solution and, and reopen it just to be a hundred percent sure. To be honest with you, that everything is really cleared out um, at a high level. Uh, so beyond that, that is pretty much the base that, that will get you going uh, with, with .NET 9, but there are some things to consider and also start to change. So the first thing here is that inside of the new project templates, they've changed the default packaging for Windows. By default, it was MSIX, but they've changed it here to none as the default. This is nice if you're on a lockdown machine where you can't install things or you don't have the store application because your ID department blocked it. This is gonna enable you to easily uh, automatically deploy your applications. You could have done this before manually, uh, but you know, in this case, this is the new default that the team is going with. So uh, you'll need to not only change this in your CS proj, but you'll also need to go into properties launch settings JSON here. And here, this is what the profile is getting called uh, when you run the Windows application. So you're gonna need changes from MSIX package to project there. And that will automatically know how to get up, run it, and do everything like that as well. And then you'll be good to go. So that should, at a high level, give you everything you need. Here we can see under our packages, we can see that I have my Maui controls and I have my logging debug 9.0, so which is awesome. Now, did note here that the default SDK that I have with Visual Studio 2022 uh, gave me the 9.0.0 controls, and I'm pretty sure that these two are nearly identical. I'm not sure if there's any like little fixes in between those two, but you could grab the 9.0.10 and put that in there as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and select the Windows machine uh, here, and I'm just gonna go ahead and run it. Let's just see if my new .NET 9 project runs and everything is good. So let's let's give it a look here. Uh, and you definitely wanna run it and definitely take a look at the output here as well inside of your application. So if I go into this output window, let me see up here, I'm just gonna put it here and do build. We can see a few things. One, our application's running, so that's awesome. But if we take a look a little bit closer at the output window, we can notice that there were some warnings that were going on here for the main page. There's some obsolete calls getting called here as well. So we'll definitely want to figure that out. So I'm going to repin this here. Perfect. Cool. And you know we have our application up, running, good to go. I have this frame around it as well. So we'll, we'll fix that up too. Well, the very first thing that you're going to want to change in your application, get rid of some warnings, there's actually nothing in your program file. This one is totally fine. This, you know, nothing to change here in general. It's totally good to go. Your main page also should be pretty good to go. We'll come back to it and we'll take a look at it here in a second. But the biggest change is going to be not in your app shell, although the new template does use a flyout for some reason uh, by default, uh, but everything else should be the same there. Uh, there shouldn't be any changes into your code behind of your app shell. Totally good. And your app.xaml, uh, this should pretty much be the same too. But in the code behind, this is where things are gonna get a little bit funky and different. Because first, we can see that the main page property has been deprecated. It has been marked as obsolete. Uh, and that is because the team is transitioning over to the window bake base mechanism that is baked into .NET MAUI. So we're gonna wanna delete this here. And notice here, this is using app shell, but this could have also been, uh, you know, main page here, for example, which would have been a, a page, not activity page. This would have been a page. And this is what your Blazor hybrid application would default to because it doesn't have shell in the root. But uh, most .NET MAUI applications use the app shell, so we're going to use that. So the first thing that we're going to want to do here is delete that code. Yep, we're totally going to delete it. And then underneath the constructor, we're going to override our create window here and our create window is what gets activated when the application starts up and that is where we're going to create a new window with our app shell so i'm going to say new window there we go and then new app shell now notice it, it can also pass in the page so if you didn't have app shell and you're using blazor hybrid this would be main page for example but we are using app shell here all right now, if I run this application again, we're going to see that there shouldn't be any output uh, warnings anymore about uh, main page being deprecated. So that's totally good to go. 
and we should see our application up, running, and uh, good once again. So there's our app. Awesome. Click, 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 click. We're good to go. Rad. Now, beyond that, uh, there is a few other things that we want to take into consideration. So here, for example, imagine in anywhere in your code, maybe in a view model, maybe in somewhere else, you had a little bit of code that looked like this. So you had a little uh, await in here for app.current.mainpage.displayAlert, right? Now, we did this all the time. If I made this an async up here, we would you know, wait to display this alert or pop up or dialogue. But remember, main page is deprecated here, um, and it also could be null as well. So we want to get rid of anywhere in our code that is looking like this. So we can, we can come in and instead of using app, we'll use app shell here. And instead of saying main page, we can just say dot current. And in that case, we can also have display alert display action sheet and display prompt async. So we can get rid of that there. Now, if you're not using app shell and you need to get it, you need to get access to the window. So what you can do in that case is you could await and you can say app dot current here. And then I'll do, uh, in this case, I guess we'd have to say our var, uh, window here. I'm going to say app dot current. I'm going to say dot and then I'll do windows here and you would need to get like the first or default or iterate through them somehow. Basically you would want to make sure that, uh, you have, you know, some, something going on there. Basically you're always going to have a window, but you want to check against null. So here I can now say, uh, yeah, if is not equal null, then here I can do window dot page. And that's going to be the page that is displayed here. We'll say, uh, is not null. There we go. And then you'd also want to do uh, that. I guess you'd want to do dot page. There we go. If I'm doing this correct here, there we go. And then page, page, page. There we go. <laughs> is not null. So that's the best way of doing it there. So we're getting the page, you know, first a default here. You could iterate through them. You can see what the, uh, whatever is visible there, create some sort of uh, service that's going to get it. But that is the main way of doing it here if you're using app shell. And then here, for example, if you're not using app shell and you're just using your main page, this is what you're going to want to do basically is try to grab your window or first window or something like that, grab the page from it, and then pop up the little alert there, which is super rad. So I'm just going to go ahead and comment this out here so we can continue to run our app, but just be aware that you'll need to handle that. Okay. You may also have noticed that in my XAML, I also had this frame. Now this frame has actually been uh, obsoleted in .NET 9. So you might get some warnings uh, when you build and when you run your application. So we want to remove this and we want to replace it with border here. And border is a uh, control has been built into .NET Maui for a long time. Uh, and it allows you to do different stroke shapes and different things like that. So here we have a corner radius of 10. So we can emulate what the frame had by replacing this with a stroke shape. You know, there's a lot more flexibility here. I'm going to say round rectangle and then 10, which would be the corner radius that's going on. I could then also give it a stroke of orange, for example, and then I could say stroke uh, thickness, let's do thickness there of, let's give it two, for example. So now if I run the application again, we're going to see that the updated border I haven't, has a transparent background. So I'd want to adjust that still, but we should see the exact same sort of frame that we sort of have made here. So there's that frame that's going on around that .NET bot and we're good to go. Cool. Now, a few other things that you should be aware of is that inside of the resources and styles and uh, styles again, this is the default sort of selection that the .NET MAUI team puts together for applications. So it has all of the default uh, styling that you can choose to delete, override, change the colors that are updated here in your application. But uh, in the styles, those are the main themes. So you can find button and checkbox and date pickers. One thing that I would recommend doing is actually deleting that frame because it is obsolete. So you can just delete that completely out of there. 
but you're also going to want to grab a new style if you choose to use this control, which is the title bar. Now, if I scroll down here, I'm just going to put in alphabetical order. We can see all of them here under do, 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 do. here we go. A time picker above page. I'm going to paste this in. And this is the one that's from the default template in Donna nine. So what I would do is probably just create that, or you could take a look at the source code that I have there, but this is basically giving me all the visual states, the minimal height request for the new title bar control, which is awesome. Now this is actually in the new templates, but it's commented out. Um, I'm not sure exactly why it's commented out, but it is commented out. So you comment it back in there, but this gives you the light and dark themes, everything like that in the current selection. So now you'd have everything totally good to go. And then beyond that, uh, at a high level, that's honestly really it. There's not too much else that you would need to change inside your application. If you want to change the Windows packaging, awesome. You don't have to. The version number and the biggest thing is getting rid of the old main page code wherever you're at in your application. But beyond that, now your application should just continue to run and take advantage of all of the latest and greatest inside of .NET 9 for .NET MAUI. If you do want the latest and greatest, you know, .NET 9 image and bot, you could create the new template, put the new bot in there and you'd be good to go instead of the .NET 8 bot. But hopefully you've removed that from your project <laughs> as well and not shipping that. All right, well, that is gonna do it for this one. It's actually relatively short and to the point. It's really not that uh, complicated to get going with .NET 9 and .NET MAUI and moving your existing applications over. Now, there's a lot more, of course, if you have different NuGet packages and different uh, other items in your application that you might want to update that are using that app main page across there as well. But now you're totally ready to go. You can not only start integrating in new controls like the title bar, you can also integrate the new Sync Fusion Community Toolkit uh, that's out there. With all the new controls, there's a new template uh, that David and the team showed off at .NET Conf that have an entire full baked application uh, to give you uh, reference architecture, which is really cool. And like I said, pretty much the exact same steps here are for not only .NET MAUI, but also if you're using Blazor Hybrid as well just if you're using app shell or the main page, like I showed here. Ooh, there's one more thing I do want to show you really quick. I actually went through the uh, process of upgrading the .NET MAUI workshop to .NET 9. This all obviously uses CI CD to build the application, but it goes through the same steps here that I go and I update a few different items. There were a few things that were older that were removed or added in. And you'll see I'm using the different target frameworks for .NET 9 and changing things to MAUI version. The biggest thing is that I changed how the styles work from frame over to border, uh, which I just showed. And then one thing is with the compile time bindings. Sometimes when you're inside of a collection view or a list view and you're inside the item, you need to do this relative source binding. And you can see here on the left in the red, you can see that I just did a relative source binding of the monkey's view model for the go to details command. In the new .NET 9 implementation with compiled bindings, you also need to specify the X data type of that ancestor as well. So you're actually specifying the type twice, one of the type for the ancestor and one for the data type for the compiled binding. So you might get a warning or an error on that. So that's something to consider as well. All right, I think that's all the things. I will leave a link to that workshop upgrade uh, diff that's there. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know if you see some other things going on in your application, other things that you had to upgrade, move around, change around like that. Let me know in the comments what you think, uh, how and how it went, uh, and if you have any other questions. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, I'm going to be back to doing some more regular videos, so make sure you subscribe, like, do all the things. So until next time, I'm James, and thanks for watching.